Confession brings possession. What you confess is what you possess. And to God be the glory. So if you're going to speak negative stuff, you know what you're going to get? Amen. I'm not talking about positive living. I'm talking about truth living. Hello? Truth living. The Bible says that we shall know the truth and the truth shall set us free. <laughs> Everybody say God's time is God's will. Do you all believe that God sent you here tonight? Then you're in his will. Amen. <laughs> but there's another place that we're going to go to. And I pray everybody gets this. It's fitting in God's will. God's will is God's time and God's time is God's will, isn't it? Amen. Everybody say God's will is God's time and God's time is God's will. We talked a little bit about God's time and God's will and things that try to prevent us from walking in God's time. And one of the things is non-acceptance. Amen? Because the devil loves to hit you with non-acceptance. In other words, rejection. That you're not, you're not accepted. And it also produces oppression, doesn't it? When an individual walks in non-acceptance because the devil's convinced them that they're not accepted because that's what happened to Eve. Hello? She believed that God was holding something back from her, so she was worthy to receive all the things from God when she had already gotten them. But the devil stole from her. Of course, she was out of position by even going over to the tree. Hello? So it was God's will for not her to be at the tree. So she walked out of God's will by going to the tree. Amen? But the devil stole from her worthiness amen and exchange it for unworthiness now when an individual walks in non-acceptance or rejection or oppression walls begin to build and these walls begin to produce pride because pride protects self because of fear that they might get hurt again are you with me and what protects pride fear amen and what protects fear anger so all of these here are an area where the, the whole thing is, is the devil's always trying to get you out of God's time so God's will can't be manifested. Amen. See, you carry the will of God within you. You may not know exactly what the will of God is. Thank God we'd mess it up anyways. So what God wants us to do is not only walk in his will, but do his will. And there is a difference. You may be in God's will, right? In other words, you're in God's will by being here tonight. What you do here or not, while you're here, is whether you're doing God's will. Because there's a place where God's will is positional. Amen? And then you must do what God requires you to do. You may be in God's will, but not doing God's will. Are you with me? <laughs> now, you may be doing God's will, but not in his will. We're going to talk more about this. Ask the Holy Ghost to get you understanding. <laughs> now, <laughs> You may be in his will and doing his will. That's the perfect will. Now, I'm going to go back on this because the Bible tells us that there are three wills. There are in, in Romans 12, you want to go there for a minute? Please do. Romans 12. <laughs> We're going to talk about fitting in God's will. And what God wants us to do is like fit in his will. So he's, what's he doing? He's, he's molding you. He's fitting you in his will. See, while you're in his will, he's fitting you for his will. Oh, 
praise God. It's like two stages of God's will. Uh, where did I say to go? Oh, Romans 12. <laughs> Hallelujah. In verse 2. Now we'll go to verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you what? Present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your responsibility. Right? Man, if you're not going and surrendering every single day to God Almighty, hello, you can't sleep all day. Hello, you can't just work all day. You must surrender. And then you must stay surrendered because that's the true key. That's a key. Surrender. So it says here, now go to verse 2. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the what? Renewing of your mind that you may what? Prove. That you may prove what is the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Now, you may be in God's will, but not doing God's will. Amen? In other words, you made it here. That's good, isn't it? But you may not be doing God's will, depending on what you're doing here. Amen? So if you came here because this is a teaching ministry, are you with me? Then you would have your Bible, your notes, and so forth, and that's doing God's will while you're here. In other words, you're in God's will because you came here. Now are you going to do God's will that you're here? All right, that's called, all right. So if you came here, right, it's God's will. You're in God's will by coming here. But if you're not do, practicing, if you're not doing God's will while you're here, it's called good. The good will. Because at least you're in God's will, but you might not be doing God's will. Are you with me? Then there's the one you call acceptable. And that's when, you're not in God's will. In other words, you're not positioned, but you're doing God's will. Even though some people are getting rescued and saved and so forth, but you're still not in God's will because God didn't send you there. That's called acceptable. But then there's the perfect will of God where you're not only in God's will, but you're doing God's will. Are you with me? Praise God, you can explain it to me later. <laughs> Are you all right? Okay, go to Philippians 2. How many want to do God's perfect will? Amen? Well, then you must be not only in God's will, but you must be doing God's will. And when the Lord said to me, I want you to talk about fitting, fitting in God's will, I was like, what? But anyways, we're going to do it. We'll be obedient about this. Philippians chapter 2. Is everybody there? Fitting in God's will. Praise God. Guess we're going to the potter's house. Philippians 2 and verse 12. Is everybody there? Therefore, would you read it with me, please? Philippians 2 and verse 12. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not in, and not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, Work out your what? Your own salvation with fear and trembling or reverence. For it is God who what? Works in you both, see the word both, to what? Will, it's in his will, and to what? To do for his good pleasure. Does everybody understand that and see that? Amen? Do all things without what? Complaining and disputing. That you may become blameless and harmless children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine as lights in the world, holding fast the word of life so that I may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain or labored in vain. Wow. So to will and do, do you understand that? So you can be in God's will, but you must be doing God's will. And there is a difference. That's why there's grace. Thank God. Hallelujah. <laughs> in other words, are you saved? 
Amen. Well, is that God's will? The Bible says that he desires no one to perish. So you're in God's will by being saved, aren't you? But it doesn't mean that you're doing God's will, does it? Because there's a call on your life that God is expecting you to do. But if you're not fulfilling that, you're not doing God's will, are you? But you're still saved. That means you're in God's will. But you're not in his perfect will, are you? So God's got to fit you melt you, mold you, deliver you, heal you, position you, and kill you so that you can go, so that you can manifest God's will. Amen? <laughs> Everybody all right? Okay, go to Matthew 7. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Lift your hands to heaven and ask for another drink. Lord, we need some more from you. Hallelujah. Because we want to do your will. Praise you, Lord. <laughs> Verse 7. Glory. Is everybody there? Verse 7. Did I say verse 7? I meant Matthew 7 and verse 21. Did you bring your Holy Ghost eraser? <laughs> yes, verse 21. Okay. Matthew 7, verse 21. Thank you. Is everybody there? Let's read it. Not everyone, come on, who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. But he who what? Does the will of my Father in heaven. Now, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not what? prophesied in your name cast out demons in your name and done many wonders in your name now that's according to the will of god isn't it that's doing god's will right and then i will declare that i never knew you depart from me you who practice lawlessness in other words they were not in god's will but they were doing the will come on are you with me let me share something with you there is an area where there's the will of the Word and the will of the Spirit. Mm, we'll get there in a second. Here. <laughs> Let's go a little further. <laughs> is everybody okay? So doing the will of the Father, they were doing, right? But they weren't in God's will. That's why the Lord said, depart from me, you practice law. Hey, there's a lot of people out there preaching the gospel, prophesying, doing all kinds of stuff out there. But you know what they're doing at home? Beating their wives, doing dope, drinking, partying, pornography, and everything else. So are they in God's will? No. But are they doing the will? Hello? That's called the will of the Word. But they're not doing the will of the Spirit. And the Lord says, you ain't coming home. Why? Because those who practice such things according to the flesh will not enter the kingdom of heaven. God can use a donkey to save somebody. He can use a sinner. Believe me, I've been in a places where I knew that God was using this sinner. Hello? On my behalf. And I just stepped back and watched it. Praise God. You know, God can use anybody he wants, can't he? Hallelujah. Now go to uh, Matthew 13. I mean, Matthew, uh, Matthew 7, verse 13. I'm sorry. <laughs> We're going to get it together here tonight. God willing. <laughs> Enter. Is everybody there? Would you read it with me? Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in by it. Because narrow is the gate, and difficult is the way which leads to life, and there are few who find it. Wow. Narrow and difficult. Narrow. Fitting, isn't it? You gotta, let's get squeezed. And fit. Did you ever notice that the longer you walk with the Lord, the narrower it gets? Hallelujah. 
So that's fitting. Narrow is fitting. And the Bible says difficult, but it's narrow and difficult. That's God's fitting you into God's will. And he's saying it's difficult. In other words, then there's enduring. So it's called representation of fitting and enduring. Say fitting and enduring. Amen. Because when God begins to fit you, starts to melt you and mold you and do things and expose you, he's fitting you. And during this, you've got to endure. You can't run. You've got to endure. There's too many runners. That's why they can never do the perfect will of God. Oh, hallelujah. Now, what's he doing? He's fitting you in his will. Everybody say, he's fitting me in his will to do his will. So are you going through anything? Well, good. You're being fitted to do his will. Are you with me? Oh, hallelujah. Let's go on. John 7. John 7. In verse 17. Is everybody there? Let's read it. 17 and 18. If anyone wills to do his will, he shall know concerning the doctrine whether it is from God or whether I speak in my own authority. He who speaks from himself seeks his own glory, but he who seeks the glory of the one who sent him is true, and no unrighteousness is in him. Now, you may be doing the written will, hello, but not in the will of the Spirit. Are you with me? See, because there are many individuals, that's where you must discern that. You got to make sure that what you're getting is from the spirit and not just from an unclean spirit. How many times have you believed that God said, go do this? And it was a trap. Hello? Now, you were in God's will and you believed that you were obedient to go do God's will, but it wasn't God's will. Who told you to go do that? That's when he makes a way of escape by ignorance. But the Bible says that those that are willing, willfully, willfully going to go sin, that's danger. Because you are rejecting not only the will of the Spirit, but you are rejecting the will of the Word. And there is no protection. Are you all understanding this? Hallelujah. Now, go to Hebrews 10. Oh, it's good to hear the pages turn it on a Tuesday night. That's where a lot of people know the word, don't they? But they don't know the spirit. Come on. So they may be in God's will, but they can't do God's will. Or they may be doing God's will, but they're not in God's will. Oh, they can quote the scriptures up and down and all around and tell you the page numbers, but they can't walk it. Oh, and God is merciful, isn't he? Go to Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 5. Is everybody there? Okie dokie. Would you read it with me, please? Therefore, when he came into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you have prepared for me. And burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, you had no pleasure. Then I said, Behold, I have come, and the volume of the book it is written of me to do your will, O God. Now, when the will of the word meets the will of the spirit, it becomes the sword of the spirit. Now say this with me. When the will of the spirit meets the will of the word, it becomes the sword of the spirit. 
Are you with me? Now, this must be in God's time, isn't it? It must be in when? God's time, because God's time is what? God's will. And God's will is His what? Time. So when the Word, the will of the Word meets the will of the Spirit, it becomes the sword of the Spirit. And nothing can come against the sword of the Spirit. Go to Proverbs. <laughs> Go to Hebrews 13 while we're here. Hebrews 13 and verse 20. <laughs> he is fitting you in his will to do his will. Verse 20, now may the God of peace who brought up our Lord Jesus from the dead, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you what? Complete in every good work to do his will. Working in you what is well pleasing to his, in his sight through Jesus Christ to whom be glory forever and ever. Complete in every good good work to do his will does everybody understand that in other words you are cooperating because will is a representation of choice amen so what you are doing to maintain every good work you are cooperating you are making the choice to cooperate with the will of the word and the will of the Spirit. You must be involved. Is everybody with me? Say, I must be involved. Your choice or your will to do His will. Are you, are you with me? Now look, let's just say you're at work. So you know that you got this job there, right? So you know you're in God's will. Amen? And you're at the job, and you're working, and the Holy Spirit says, listen, I've been preparing you and I've been pre preparing this person for you to witness to or share Jesus with or your testimony are you with me so you're there right and here's a good work just about ready to happen and the devil says man what will people think they're going to throw you out of here they think you're nuts this really isn't God's will he's going to do everything he can to prevent the sword of the spirit from being manifested why? Because when the sword of the spirit is manifested, it pierces the spirit, soul, and body and discerns the thoughts of the mind. Are you with me? And that person can't let that go. So you're at your job and the Lord says, okay, now, you know the, will, the word of God, right? You know that it says, and you overcame by the word of their testimony. He know, you know that he wants salvation. You know he wants to deliver it, right? So you already know the will of God. You're in the will of God by being at the job. You know the word, the will of the word, don't you? Now it's the will of the Spirit that's saying, okay, now go do this. Now you've got to cooperate with both. Doesn't the Bible say that there are three who are witness? Amen. So, and a threefold cord is hard to break. So your cooperation with the will of the word and the will of the Spirit produces the sword of the Spirit, and that person is going to get free. That person is going to get saved. Why? Because it was associated with God's time. See, now you've just set a whole other dimension because you're not a, war, working according to your time or world time. You're operating according to God's time. And that means God's will is going to manifest. But when the will of the word and the will of the spirit and your will cooperate, it won't return void. Come on, are you with me? Go to Proverbs 15. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Proverbs 15. That's why, you know, some people speak a word out of season. 
and it actually causes a problem instead of a rescue. In Proverbs 15, 23, I believe. Is everybody there? Come on, read it with me. A man has joy by the answer of his mouth. And a word spoken in due season, how good it is. Yes. So when the will of the word meets the will of the spirit, because your will is cooperating, it produces the sword of the spirit, and it's a word in season that changes a life. Everything that Jesus did in this natural realm was according to God's time. That's why he didn't go anywhere. You remember when, when they wanted to go somewhere and they wanted to kill him? And he said, no, it's not my time. So he didn't go, did he? See, he knew God's time because he knew by staying in, in the will of God, it was producing the time of God. And, of course, he was the Word and the Spirit. So he just had to cooperate now with God's time. Does everybody get it? And the sword of the Spirit was manifest, and that's why he rose the people from the dead. There was nothing held from him. It said he walked in the fullness of the Spirit. The fullness. Because he knew when to speak a word in season. Has everybody got it? Oh, word spoken in season is good. The combination of word <laughs> and the spirit. God's will will be... <laughs> All right, let me, let me uh, give a couple examples here. In other words, when the word meets the... The will of the word meets the will of the spirit. It produces the sword of the spirit. Uh, is it God's will for people to get married? Amen. Now, maybe not God's will for a certain person to get married, but it's God's will that people get married. He doesn't come against marriage, does he? Of course, unless it's, you know, Susie and Lucy and John and Ralphie, you know, that's different. That's not according to God's will. Hello. <laughs> Now, so it's God's will for people to get married, isn't it? Now, you're, so you get married and you're in God's will. All right, praise God. Now, you must do God's will. That means there's work to be done. Amen? Let me tell you, marriage is full-time ministry. You want to get in ministry? Get married. <laughs> it's full-time ministry. Why? Because you've got to, listen, the Lord said that the man must look and treat his wife like Christ treats the church. He treats you pretty good, don't he? Hello? But see, now you, it must be worked. Now the will of God must be worked. Where the man washes the, the, the woman with the word of God and so forth. And, you know, there's just a specific will of God. It must be worked in a marriage. Amen? For that marriage to work. So it's God's will that we get married. But it's also, you, so you're in God's will when you get married, right? Now you must do God's will while you're married. Are you with me? That's why many things fall apart. They start off good. Oh, yes. The love of my life. Let's get married. Have sex quick. Well, that was fun. Now what? <laughs> Hello? Hey, some marriages are that way, man. Now you die. <laughs> so it's got... <laughs> It's, you must work God's will then, right? Because it's God's will for you to maintain the marriage. Amen? <laughs> Come on.
Come on, lift your hands up and get a drink. Will you? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you. <laughs> Whew, got hot in here. <sighs> Again, I want to share with you that you believe it's God's will for you to be here. So you're in his will. Then what you do while you're here is whether you're doing the will of God or you're not. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> now, we go from will to will. Uh, are you with me? The Bible says we go from glory to glory, but I want you to share with you what produces the glory. Because when you're cooperating, hello, with the will of the word and the will of the spirit, you're going from will to will. By going from will to will, it's manifesting the glory of God and bringing glory to him. Are you with me? See, because you're going from, why? Because your will is a choice, isn't it? So as you're cooperating, you're making those right choices because you're in God's time. So you're walking in God's will. And when the will of the word meets the will of the spirit, are you with me? The sword of the spirit is manifesting, isn't it? Amen. Something is happening. Something is always happening, isn't it? Uh, are you with me? You all get this? I got some blank faces like, Ugh. So, God is fitting us in his will to what? Do his will. Now, let me share with you how he's fitting. The Bible says this. It says a lot of things, but I'll tell you a couple of things. Go to Psalm 34. How's he fitting you? Well, you got married, right? So that's the start. Psalm 34. Oh, hallelujah. Psalm 34. Hey, marriage is good training, man. Let me tell you. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. As long as both of you are willing to cooperate with the will of God. Hey, Amen. It makes it difficult. You know, it makes it difficult for individuals that have been married and then they get saved and the other one's not. You know? Or one's religious and one's spirit-filled. Or one's bound and one's free. It makes it difficult, but it's good training. Amen? It's good training. Good death. Psalm 34 and verse 19, would you read it with me? Is everybody there? Hallelujah. <laughs> Verse 19. I feel a heat wave coming from over there. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Wow, so how's God fitting you? There are afflictions. Hey, listen, God knows that you're going to be afflicted. Does everybody understand? Is there anybody in this room that's not been afflicted? Well, come here. If you're not afflicted, we're going to get you afflicted tonight. <laughs> Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. What's he doing? He's fitting you, right? He's fitting you in his will. So is it God's will for you to be afflicted? Yes. Come on. You know, there's different levels of affliction. I mean, I'm not telling you to go out and jump in front of a car and say, hello, I need to get afflicted today. That's not God's will. That's plumb stupid. <clears throat> you know, there's a difference between self-inflictions, you know. <laughs> you know then, uh, but, you know, things do happen, don't they? We get afflicted in certain areas. Things happen. But... Everybody goes through it. But you know what? God is fitting you in his will to do his will. Amen. 
Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. Right? He guards all his bones. Not one of them is broken. Evil shall slay the wicked, and those who hate the righteous shall be condemned. The Lord redeems the soul of his servants, and none of those who trust in him shall be what? Condemned. Praise God. Go to Luke 17. Luke 17. Fitting in God's will. Hmm. Praise God. Is everybody there? So we know that there's going to be afflictions, isn't there? <clears throat> you know, so many people freak out. Oh, this can't be God's will. Listen, it's, it, you're in his will. It doesn't matter what's going on, does it? You're in his will. Now the whole thing is why you're in his will is to do his will. Even when the affliction comes, that's when you're to do his will. Why? Because he's fitting you. You're going from will to will. Why? To produce glory to him. <clears throat> Too many people run. Luke 17, and verse 1 through 4. Then his disciples said, I mean, then he said to the disciples, it is impossible that no offenses should come, but woe to him through whom they do come. I would be, it would be better for him if a millstone were hung around his neck and he were thrown into the sea than that he should offend one of these little ones. Take heed to yourselves. If your brother sins against you, rebuke him. And if he repents, forgive him. And if he sins against you seven times in a day, and seven times in a day returns to you, saying, I repent, you shall forgive him. Wow. So we know that there will be offenses, won't there? You will be offended. You know why? Because you're going to be in an area in your walk or be around people where you're expecting higher expectations or they are. Amen? So they may say something that may offend you. That offense, hello, he just said that offenses will come. So is it in God's will that offenses come? Yes. What's he doing? Fitting you in his will to do his will. Are you with me? Why? So that the will of the word will meet the will of the spirit and the sword of the spirit will be manifested. Hello? Hello? Some of you are going to need to get this tape. <laughs> go, go to John 15. But I thought I was doing his will. I mean, I thought I was in his will. I mean, I don't know what I'm willing. <laughs> That's called confusion. And God's not giving you a spirit of confusion. Amen. So are you in his will if there's confusion? No. Glory. John 15. Is everybody there? In verse 18. Would you read it with me? If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. Is it God's will for the world to hate you? Yes. So you're in his will. Does everybody understand? Everybody wants it, but everybody like them. Well, if they don't like me, then they... You know. Soul head. Come out of that soulish arena and quit being a man pleaser and become a God pleaser. Did you ever get around somebody that you got to tiptoe around them because no matter what you say, it gets turned around? I'm not going there. <laughs> Okay, let's go back here. Verse 19. If you were of the world, the world would what? Love its own. Yet because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you, man. They hate you. You irritate them. The presence of God and the will of God in you irritates the world. They can't stand you. 
You're clean and they're filthy. No matter where you work. Hello? They can't stand you. The demons hate you. The devil hates you. And they're either filled with the Holy Ghost or they're filled with the devil. And many of them. No, no compromise whatsoever. Come on, are you understanding that? Remember the word that I said to you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. So is it God's will for you to be persecuted? If you've not been persecuted, something ain't right. And I'm not telling you you're, that you need to be crucified or, you know, whipped or something like this. I'm saying persecuted for what you stand for. Hello? If they, keep my, if they kept my word, they would keep yours also. But all things, all these things, they will do to you for my name's sake because they do not know him who sent me. If I had not come and spoken to them, they would have not, they'd have no sin. But now they have no excuse for their sin. Why? Because there is conviction going on in the world, isn't there? He who hates me hates my father also. If I had not done among, if I had not done among them the works which no one else did, they would have no sin. But now they have seen and also hated both me and my father. But this happened that the word might be fulfilled, which is written in their law. They hated me without a cause. So the will of the word was meeting the will of the spirit, wasn't it? And it was changing lives. So is the world going to hate you? Yeah, man. Do you see that? Are you going to have offenses? Yes. Are you going to have afflictions? Yes. Is that the will of God? Yes. You are in his will. You know how many people go freaky? Oh, God. Somebody hit my car. Oh, my God. It must be. I, I'm, I'm, what did I do wrong? Lord, forgive me. Oh, God, I don't know what I did, but forgive me. Are you dead? No. Is it God's will for afflictions to come? Yes, you know, things do happen in this world. And the devil is out at every corner trying to get you. He pops up out of garbage cans. <laughs> He's underneath water fountains. <laughs> he's always out to get you but thank God he who's in you is greater than he who's in the world amen so God is fitting you in his will do you honor your understanding now about in his will he's fitting you in his will for you to do his will oh hallelujah we're getting somewhere now I'll go to James. Praise God. James. James 1. James chapter 1. Is everybody there? Would you read verse 2 with me? Come on, we all know this. My brother encountered all joy when you what? Fall into various trials. Oh, hallelujah. When you fall into various trials, are you in God's will? Oh, isn't that something? What's he doing? He's fitting you in his will to what? Do his will. He's molding you. He's, you know, killing you. He's preparing you. He's, what? To do his will. Because, see, you're going from will to will, which is producing glory to him, because there's something more important later. See, we get so caught up in right now. Oh, what am I going to do right now? Oh, am I in your will? Am I doing your will? What, am I, what do you want from me? You're already in my will. 
Do you want to be in my will? Yes, I want to be in your will. Well, then you are. See, that's all you need to have was a willing mind. Then you're in his will. Now I'm going to fit you while you're in my will so you can learn how to do my will. See, so you and I can become like-minded. So now the will of the word will meet with the will of the spirit and the sword of the spirit will be manifested and you will reach and change many souls because God don't move no other way but by through the sword of the spirit. Are you with me? So we're going to count it all joy. And if you're not in any trials, you just come by my house and we'll get you in some. Believe me, I got a block full of trials. <laughs> okay, verse 3. <laughs> We better start at verse 1 again. <laughs> Is everybody all right? Are you getting this? My brethren, count it what? All joy when you fall into what? Various trials, knowing that the testing of your face produces patience, which means what? Endurance. But let patience have its what? Or endurance have its what? Perfect work. That you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Why? Because you are being fitted in the will of God to do the will of God. So you should be counting it all joy. Hallelujah. Count it all joy. Come on, lift your hands to heaven. I want to count it all joy, Lord. Give me that joy, joy, joy. Down in my heart. Down in my heart. Down in my heart. Glory. I got joy. Go to James 4. James 4. Praise God. Thank you, Master. James chapter 4 and verse 13. Glory. Are you getting fitted in his will? What's that for? To do his will. Glory. Hey, listen, that's all you need to look at Jesus' life. What makes you think you're going to have anything different? This ain't no tiptoe through the tulips, man. The word believe means to follow. Amen? I don't know anybody that desires to do the will of God doesn't go through offenses, trials, hatred, persecution, boneheadedness. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff out there, man. It's all for fitting you in the will of God to do His will. Are you with me? In verse 13, come now, you who say today or tomorrow, we will go to such and such a city, spend a year there, buy and sell, and make a profit. Sounds like the old man. <laughs> you know? Hey, we're going to do all that. Yeah. You wake up the next day, you're still looking for a nickel. Yeah, we had great plans last night. Woo, yeah, we're going to start businesses, do all kinds of stuff, man, you know. Got up the next morning. Oh, dear God, help me. <laughs> Hallelujah. In verse 14, whereas you do not know what will happen tomorrow, for what is your life? What is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then it vanishes away. Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we shall live and do this or that. But now you boast in your arrogance and all boasting is evil. There is, therefore, to him who knows to do good and does not do it, to him it is sin. Oh, so when you're in God's will... He's expecting you to do his will. Are you with me? 
good. Ah, oh, hallelujah. If the Lord wills in his will and to do his will, right? So you go from will to will, don't you? Amen, which produces his glory. You may be in his will. Now listen. You may be in his will by waiting to do his will. Come on. Yeah, there are so many people that are waiting. I don't know if I'm in his will. I don't know how much longer I can wait. I'm dying. Praise God. Praise God. You know, why? Because your waiting is producing endurance. See, sometimes God causes you to wait until you stop grumbling, complaining, or asking. Sometimes he waits until you get to the place where you start receiving, where you start thanking. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for that contract. Thank you, Father. I thank you because you said whatever I touch shall prosper. Wherever I go, your kingdom will be manifest. Thank you, Father, for my trials and tribulations. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you for the, the dog that I had and I was dead. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. You know, people get all freaky over stuff. You need to just thank God. You know, people get caught up in the soulless arena. You need to thank God for your family, so forth, whatever it is, even though they're passed away. Thank you for that time. Now, don't do it every single day, you know, I'm just saying. But when the, when the devil begins to bring things to your remembrance, you know, of condemnation or guilt, you just start thanking God. And you thank him that he, you, you've been delivered. Why? Because you're cooperating with the will of the word and you're meeting okay the will of the word and the will of the spirit and that's producing a what sort of the spirit and you're kicking butt do you get it see the devil so many times people get so caught up in them they get so caught up in them that they can't go forward they get so caught up in woes as measles afflictions that put, they, they lose sight because the devil beats them up. Man, look, you're afflicted. Man, you're sick. Oh, you sinned. You bad person. You're sneezing. You've got a cold. You bad, bad, you sinned. What's the devil trying to do? Come on. What's he trying to do? Amen. He's trying to get you out of position, isn't he? And you need to thank God. Hallelujah. Thank Him for what? Your sickness? No, thank Him that He healed you 2,000 years ago. And then repent for touching whatever you touched. <laughs> well, you want the blood, right? You want the covering of the blood. So we go from glory to glory. Remember, even by waiting to do God's will means you're in His will. Hello? But one thing God doesn't do, he doesn't interrupt himself. He wouldn't tell you to do something and then tell you, don't, don't finish it. That's not God's will. He always tells you to complete because he is perfect and complete. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. Go to Matthew 26. Matthew 26. fitting in God's will he's fitting you in his will isn't he it's, the path is narrow and difficult squeezing Matthew 26 and verse 42 I believe I believe that's why I spoke and I spoke because I believe not that I'm right, but I believe. Okay, let's do it. Again, a second time, he went away and prayed, saying, Oh, my Father, if this cup cannot pass away from me unless I drink it. Hello? Now, was Jesus in the will of God? Yes. Now, 
even though he said, Lord, if this is possible, Father, let this cup pass me by. Hello? He was trying to avoid something, wasn't he? But was he still in God's will even though he said it? Yes. Because he didn't move. He didn't make the decision. Do you understand? He said it. He said, Father, if this is possible, let this cup pass me by. But then he said, no, not my will, but what? Your will. So did he? So he was not only in his will, but then he did his will, didn't he? Amen. He made that confession, didn't he? See, he needed to make that confession to get himself through. Because confession brings what? Possession. So, the will of the word met the will of the spirit. Are you with me? It produced the sword of the spirit and backed off the devil, didn't he? Because Jesus was able to get up and do the will of the Father. God's will. Hmm. Do you remember when uh, Jesus was on the cross? And he said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Amen. Was that God's will? Yes. Was it God's will for Jesus to be forsaken? Yes. Why? So you and I could be accepted. Was it God's will for him to have stripes? Beaten, bruised, spit on. Yes. Why? So you and I could be healed. Was he doing his will? Yes. But it's amazing how many times we go through stuff and we go, oh my God. And we freak out. And we want to run. Because trials or tribulations or things aren't going our way or whatever. What's he doing? He's fitting you in his will for you to do his will. Man, this job just doesn't pay enough money. Well, praise God. Join the club. <laughs> what job pays enough money? Hello? But it's not about the money, is it? It's about that you're in his will to do his will. But see, the world wants to entice you with worldliness. Why? Because it wants to entice you what will promote you now. What will make things easier for you now. Well, that's what it tries to cause you to believe. What you believe you need now. Well, you know, if I had a limousine stretch, I could put on there, climb aboard and praise the Lord and go down on OBT. Amen. Hey, I always thought that. I because I was in the limousine service, you know. You say have antique limousines, and I, and after I got saved, I put Jesus in gold on my '46 Chrysler limo. On both sides, all kinds of people like used to pick up going down the streets. The Lord tell me to go pick up people. I'd show for all kinds. I used to show for Jesus every day. Where do you want to go, Dad? Pick up that one. Okay. But yeah, I always saw like. Stretch limo says, climb aboard and praise the Lord. <laughs> Pick them up, bring them to a Friday night service and do quick healings. Bam, deliverance. Have a baptismal in the back. You know, they got the jacuzzis there, right? <laughs> Dunk them right then. Bam. Some we'd have to hold down for a while, <laughs> you know. <clears throat> praise God. I don't know how I got there. Uh, Ephesians 6, please. <laughs> Hallelujah. Aren't you glad you're not religious? <laughs> Hallelujah. Ephesians 6, verse 5. Bond servants. Are you all bond servants? Yeah, be obedient to those who are your masters according to the flesh with fear and trembling and sincerity of heart as to Christ. Not with eye service as men pleasers, but as bond servants of Christ doing the will of God from the what? Heart. With good will doing service as to the Lord and not to men. Knowing that whatever good anyone does, he will receive the same from the Lord whether he is a slave or free. 
Amen. Does everybody get that? Good. So there is a reward, isn't there? Amen. But he's saying do it no matter what. You know, sometimes we really need to get our eyes off of ourself. And quit going by how you feel, what your circumstances are, what your problems are, all of what you are. Amen. Everything according to the natural realm. See, we always have a tendency to look at us always according to the natural realm. I don't have enough of this. I need this. Uh -huh, uh -huh, you know? Instead of looking at who he is in you according to the things of the spirit. Are you with me? Praise God. James 4. <clears throat> James chapter 4. We're almost done. And my watch is still working. Praise God. I was in the jail the other night and I was preaching on God's time. All right? And I was, you know, sharing about you know, God's time is God's will. God's will is God's time. And that we're not bound by space and time, right? And I looked at my watch and a little while later I looked at it and I said, man, isn't that the same time? I said, man, anybody got a watch? And nobody had a watch. And I go look for my phone and look. My watch had died. Hello. See, because we're not bound by space and time. Amen. I thought, well, hallelujah. Another one of those. I, I, don't, I don't buy expensive watches. You know, those cheap watches that work good. They're throwaways. I got disposable watches. <laughs> In James 4, verse 7. Hello. Therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. There it is. That's the key. Surrender. Hello? Everybody say surrender. surrender. That's the key right there, isn't it? We know that there's a key of knowledge, but you just got some knowledge. Surrender. Surrender to what? The will of the word. And the will of the Spirit will produce the sword of the Spirit. Glory to God. Second Corinthians 4. Oh, praise God. Second Corinthians chapter 4. Everybody there? Would you read verse 11, please? For we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake. Oh, glory. That the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh. Why? Because God wants his son to be expressed through you. When the will of the word meets the will of the spirit, the sword of the spirit is manifested. But within you, Jesus is manifested. Are you seeing this? Delivered to death, Jesus manifested in our mortal body in his will to do his will. Galatians 2. Glory. Amen. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. I believe. Is everybody there? Is everybody okay? Come on, read it with me. I have been what? I have been what? Crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by what? Faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Glory. So we're living by what? Faith. Amen. I'll go to Luke 12. Luke chapter 12, and we'll close here. Are you okay? Did you get this? Luke 12, 41.
Hallelujah. Is everybody there? Let's read this together, please. Then Peter said to him, Lord, do you speak this parable only to us or to all people? And the Lord said, who then is that faithful and wise steward whom his master will make ruler over his household to give them their portion of food in what? Due season. That's timing, isn't it? Now, I want you to understand something. You are in his will, right? You're being fitted in his will to do his will. It's producing stewardship. You are earning the trust of God. Because if you are faithful with a little, you will what? Get more. All of this endurance and everything that you're going through is because you're earning your trust of God to become his steward. Now, our steward is an individual that takes another owner's things and treats them like they're his own. And hopefully you're like-minded so you don't treat them like they're your old man. Hello. See, God doesn't give you things until he begins to see that you're going to treat it the way he would. Are you with me? That's what moves people out of position because they want to get the things of God, but they haven't become like-minded with him to do it according to his will. Hello? That's why there's that time period where you're earning the trust of God, where he's waiting for you to cooperate with the will of the word and the will of the spirit. There's that span. There's that time. Why? In this period of time, there's death. There's waiting. There's training. There's testing. There's trials. There's afflictions. Why? Because you're in his will to do his will. You're in his will to do his will. You're going from will to will. Why? Because every time you cooperate with his will, God's getting the glory. God's getting the glory. God's getting the glory. God's getting the glory. And by doing this, you're becoming a steward of God's will. Because if you can't become a steward... Of the mind of Christ, you can't become a steward of the goods of Christ. Are you all getting this? That's why a lot of people want to become a steward of God's goods, but they haven't become a steward of God's mind. Okay, where were we? Verse 43. Blessed is that servant whom his master will find so doing when he comes. Truly I say to you that he will make him ruler over all that he, what, has. All that he has. See, all of this training is to become stewards of the things of the kingdom of God. So that the king's treasures can be trusted in with you are you understanding this so you must go through the training it doesn't stop because only certain treasures are released to you and as you begin to mature and grow more and earn God's trust and you go through trials did you ever notice that some trials are bigger than others well hey look at when those things happen just think about a bigger treasure coming all right, think about something God's going to, he wants you to grab hold of. See, all of these things, most of the time your trials and so forth is because something's about to happen where you, he's going to cause you to use what you just went through to you, do his will to rescue somebody else. Because why? Now you are cooperating with the will of the word, cooperating with the will of the spirit and is producing the sword of the spirit where somebody can get freed, healed, delivered, or saved. And you're becoming a steward. You're learning stewardship. Why? Because the first thing you must become a steward of is the mind of Christ. Then you become a steward of his goods. Does everybody get it? So he's training you to become like-minded, isn't he? Amen? He's fitting you in his will to do his will. Amen? Father, we thank you for your mercies, your grace. We thank you for your word tonight. Lord, you're awesome and mighty mighty thank you for our trials and tribulations lord not that i need any more but not my will your will <laughs> and everybody said amen hallelujah give god glory